Hi, I'm Matthew Holt. Thrilled to be the uh, first of two sessions on uh, Hib C TV today. And uh, the first one is going to be fun because I'm interviewing a guy who has now become more of a media star in the, uh, in the world of uh, online stuff. I don't know what we call it these days. Uh, but also on the side as a CEO of a pretty interesting company called Haptic. So uh, this is Ben Chodor. Ben, um, so tell the people out there listening on the Hebsy, Hipsy TV watching, network, watch, watch, sorry, watching, yeah, listening, watching, watching on the Hipsy TV network, um, a couple of, they're also hopefully watching on the healthcare blog if the plug-in works that we've been fighting with. Ben, tell us what, uh, first of all, tell us about Haptique and then we'll talk about your media stardom. <laughs> My media stardom. You know, mind if I take this and hold that way, you know, we don't have to, I will grab it back. anytime you want to get it back. I'm used to being on this side, asking the questions, not being asked the questions. Uh, but Haptic, basically, the most simple way to describe it is we're all about patient engagement. We go to hospitals, providers, we enable them to deliver apps, devices, content, video, securely to their clinical staff, but really what it's about at the end of the day, it's about enabling physicians to engage with patients. Um, and we believe the day is going to come that doctors, um, care managers are going to prescribe apps. It's going to be part of going to the doctor, he's going to prescribe you Lipitor and he's going to give you a cholesterol adherence app. And then the newest thing that we've added to our mix is our certification because with 40,000 plus apps out there, it's the wild, wild west of apps. No one knows which app is safe, not safe. And so really what we want to do is put a good housekeeping seal. We want to do what the ADA did for toothpaste. You know, they never said Colgate was better than Crest, but they said they both followed the standards. And that's really what our goal is. Someone has to be out there to say, is an app safe? Where did it come from? And help pe help doctors create their app formularies. That's us. All right. So you're, you're selling yourself short a little bit in one way, okay. which is that you, uh, you all... Modesty. Uh, uh, modesty. Uh, may, may, maybe modesty, maybe maybe you forgot who knows it's uh, Wednesday morning in hymns but um, I, the int one of the most interesting things you guys have done is taken essentially the app store and the uh, uh, you have to wait for me to give you the mic back before they can hear you. the poor people out there can't hear you it's, it's basically like you said curated and cataloged so tell me uh, at a bit more granular level when someone goes to the haptic website and logs and gets a piece of their password what do they see so, so the first level that we did is we basically took, you know, where Apple or Amazon or Google Play would put it in two categories. We basically took it and put it in hundreds of categories, 300 plus categories, using doctors, nurses, medical librarians. We took it, instead of putting it health and wellness, we put stint apps in stint. We put glucose monitoring in glucose monitoring. We basically curated, so we enable an institution to have a better ability to have access to the right apps, and then also to then recurate or recategorize it the way they would like. All right, so let's uh, talk a bit about what that actually looks like. So if you go to the uh, the Haptic side and you look down, you actually see all these different categories, and it's divided between professional and consumer. Yeah. Uh, so, that's a lot of hard work. You have 15,000, correct? We've done over 15,000, over 15,000, closer to 20,000 apps at this point, and growing every day. Okay, so how do you actually do that? How do you actually do that curation? How do you uh, put different apps in different places? What, what does that look like in terms of human effort? Is that some automation? No, it's, 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 well, it's 95% human, less than 5% um, automation. Basically, we get a feed in from Apple. And we get feed-ins from, you know, Android apps and HTML5 apps. We get them in, and then physically, a doctor, a nurse, or a medical librarian, or a fitness app, a physical therapist, will actually put them in the right categories. It takes about three minutes to do an app. All right, so three minutes times 15,000 is a lot of minutes, and I go, <laughs> you spend a lot of time and effort. Now, let's talk about the flip side of the equation, the business uh, that you, you referred to already, but let's actually break this down a little bit more. So now I'm a hospital, and by the way, we should de de declare out of, uh, uh, I would say self-interest, with your self-interest, that uh, the Greater New York Hospital Association, I get that right, yeah. is a parent company of Hap Haptique, so you guys are, have some relationships with hospitals already. Yeah. Okay, um, so what does a hospital actually now do? They've got this array, but what are the services that you're actually uh, supplying them, the nuts and bolts of that? So we're giving them an environment so they can actually, a branded environment. So, you know, XYZ Hospital will have a branded chiclet that will be downloaded on their patient's devices that says their name, their, their organization's name. And in there are apps that that institution wants their patients to have. And so an example of this would be, 
they don't have to take all 15 or 20,000 apps from the global haptic catalog. An institution could sit there and say, hey, I'm only going to do five apps in each category. They might only have 200 apps. They might only have 50 apps. And they could decide which apps are going to be delivered to their patient population. And that's more on a reference side. And the same thing on the clinical side. But really where it gets interesting and really what the hospitals are using us for is now when I see a patient who I'm putting him on Lipitor, let me also prescribe him a cholesterol adherence app. If he has high blood pressure, let me also give him a blood pressure app and a cuff. So, and it, let me also maybe wrap that with some content. And that's where it gets exciting. It's, it's the delivery mechanism of the engagement. So if you're thinking meaningful use stage two or three, or you go to readmissions, or you just go engagement or patient satisfaction, it's a way for an institution and a, cl a physician, a clinician, a care manager to better engage with their patients. All right. So where are you guys in the process then? So you're obviously working in hospitals, you've been curating the, the, uh, the, the haptic uh, uh, the Haptic app store, I don't forget the number, whatever what it, what it's called correctly. How, where are you in the process now of rolling this out with hospitals and, give, and tell me a bit about the sort of early feedback you've had? All right, so we are basically full rolling out in early spring everywhere. Right now, we are just onboarding our hospitals. We have our brand new environment, our brand new app, our own app, that will be coming out um, by the end of March, and we're really excited about it. And at that point, we sort of now roll it out around the country. You know, we're at about 10 hospitals right now that we're contracted with, and starting in end of March, we will be full sales out to the marketplace. So up today, up to now, it's been more about curating, getting our certification launched, and then launching our product, our final product, and then going to the marketplace. So tell me about the certification. How does that actually work? So if I'm, a, if I'm an app developer... And I think, okay, this sounds like a good idea. I need to get certified by, by Haptique. What do I actually do and what's the process that my app will go through? All right. So the first thing they'll do is they would go on the site. They would apply to, you know, register for a certification. There's a fee. It's fee-based. You know, it's a few thousand dollars to get your app certified. Certification is good for two years. And the first thing we do is we run it through, like, interoperability, um, technology, security. We make sure the app is sound and we also know what the app is doing which is really important. And then after it passes that or it fails that, if it fails that, it goes back to the app developer and we say, hey, you need to fix this and this. If it passes that, then it will go to two clinicians in that specialty. If it is a diabetes app, you know, two endos will look at it. If it's a cardiology app, two cardiologists will look at the material to make sure the material didn't come from Wikipedia. We're not trying to rate apps. We're not trying to say which is the best app. We just want the patient and the physician to know that, hey, the information didn't come from Wikipedia. It's solid, solid information and the app is safe only people should ever rate apps should be the physician and the patient. So we're just giving them the ability. They put it in, and then after they put it into the system, it should take less than 30 days to get them back whether they passed or failed. And if they failed, they could put the app in again. And our, our goal is, by launching the standards, is that they use these standards as a guidelines as they build apps. And that's the feedback we've been getting. And the feedback has been overwhelming. We thought when we launched it, it'd be a slow tick to grow it. But as we made the announcement, we're overwhelmed by how many apps are in the queue that want to be um, certified. So in terms of the actual certification, I assume you personally are not sitting there certifying all of them yourself. <laughs> Clearly not. So, but you're working with some partners. So tell me about those relationships. All right, so right now, we're partnered with the AAMC. You know, basically, they're a peer review for you know, teaching and medical stuff and teaching hospitals and, and hospitals all over the country. Um, we are also working with the Nursing Society. And we, over the next couple months, as we launch um, the certification, we'll be adding a few more societies and other reviewers. All reviewing of apps are going to be third party. It's no, not employees of Haptique. It'll be recognized brands and comp organizations that will be reviewing the apps. And when you click on our seal, it will let you know not who the individual they reviewed, but what governing bodies basically reviewed it. All right. So let's uh, talk a little bit about, and uh, oh God, we're getting the nod, I hope, for somewhere about how much time we have left, but no one takes any attention. <laughs> the viewers are as much time as we like. Okay. Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez used to do like eight, ten hours. We could we could go for that, couldn't we? No problem. Um, all right. So, uh, how many li listeners do you think are we listening after about forty-eight minutes? Well, maybe. I promise you, all your team will come back and review this later because you'll force them to. They'll feel, they'll feel they have to. Plus, they'll find out what they do. You know, half the time the people I work with are going to go, "Wow, I like saw this interview you did, and I understand what we do now." <laughs> Perhaps you could have told us separately, <laughs> but anyway. Um, all right, 
before we get really silly, let's. Uh, I want. I want to raise two sort of um, big picture issues. So, you have started in the world of hospitals. Last night, as I mentioned to you off, off camera, I went to a launch party from somebody who looks like a new competitor, a company called Social Wealth, uh, which is a sort of restart of uh, World Doc, which is a, a, a Las Vegas-based company. They're going to be aiming at the payer market. I so ran into a lot of health plan people at their party. So, who well, else? And that's what's going to be happening. Um, they're talking also about you know doing the same kind of thing, uh, layering apps that are creating environments for, for payers and ratings and all the rest of it. Um, you're focused on hospitals. They're focused on uh, plans. Uh, do you have plans to go anywhere else? Uh, well, we're not. I mean, folk, because we were incubated out of a hospital association, hospitals were our, we'll call them our natural entree, right? So hospitals bring us physicians, physicians bring us patients. The reality, we're a physician-patient play. That's where we are in the long term. Um, I love if there's some competitors coming to space. I'm finally happy. I mean, again, you're not an industry until there's other people doing it. Uh, yeah, compet- competition is really good for, for a while. <laughs> well, and, but if you have the better product or you have the patent on prescribing or the, pre- the process patent, if we end up getting it, all those things are good. So, you know, we're excited about it. And, we, you know, we are focused on also payers and dealing with the, you know, the EMRs and the EHRs. We want to integrate with all those. But we thought the key in, in the entire universe of, of health growth for us was if I get hospitals, hospitals are going to bring us physicians. Physicians are going to bring us patients. Hospitals more and more are becoming the focal point or it's center of the ecosystem of healthcare. And it's the, they should have a say in you know, the formulary of apps that are being delivered to patients. And that's really what we're all about. It's not about the store. So let me, t- tell you, let me ask you this, sort of the, the big picture question there. So if you've got uh, the room of, you know, thousand vendors in there but most of them are trying to figure out where they play around the sort of the big battleships or uh, the, the, the terminology we've been using is these frigates around battleships you've got these huge EMR vendors yep. the Epics and the Cernas and the McKessons in the world um, and then you've got people playing in the space obviously the business of the hospital is changing yep. right you now have the uh, the concept of the accountable care organization medical home blah, blah, all that kind of good stuff right all of it needs all of the stuff that we've been featuring health 2 forever that you know a good piece of what we what is what you're doing, but a lot of the vendors coming into that market who are selling the all-in-one accountable care solution, so you've got the Aetna's, the Evolence, the uh, Lumerises, uh, I just, Elias bought a company, uh, and they're in that space now as well. They're going to go to hospitals and systems and say, we can do all this stuff for you. How do you guys play in a world like that, and do you need to expand out from your core business? Yeah, we are going to expand out from, from our core business, but if you really think about it, it's first level is certification. I don't care if there's 500 stores. When we certify an app, we want that app developer to take that app anywhere they want to take it and wear, and wear that badge proudly, whether it's in iOS, whether it's you know in Google Play, whether it's on Amazon, or in anybody else's store or on their own site. So we want them to take it. So that's, that's our first thing. But our whole concept is we just really want to do, at the end of the day, what McKesson and Shure Scripts did for e-prescribing, we want to do for m-prescribing. I don't care whose technology and today whose store it's going to be. We just want our technology to be the technology when you click the button to deliver an app that we're making that handshake between physician and patient or caregiver and patient. All right. Now let's go to the most important part of the interview. How are you managing to run your own radio show online and be so successful and popular in that and run a real company? Well, first, the radio show takes me 45 minutes a week, and I read material the night before, and it's because of my producers. They make me look good on it. So I just have to learn how to read and then interview people. And it's natural. And you got to understand, I started the show for one reason. When I, when I became the CEO of Haptique, I couldn't get meetings with a lot of executives. And since I used to own a streaming media company, I said, ah, oh, I'll invite executives on the show. They get to talk about their stuff, but I'll get to meet with them. And then 20, if, if two days after I interview you, if I call you, Matthew, you're going to take my call because if it was... Well, well, well I, I, I wouldn't, but, you know, so, a, ra- a rational person. Most would. So, actually, the radio show is actually a great feeder to Haptique, and it's all about educating people on M Health. Yeah, it is, if you don't know, called the M Health Zone. I don't approve of the name, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I like you it. New names? You can send us a new name. You don't want to change a good brand name. I'm stuck with Health 2.0, and you're stuck with the M Health Zone. <laughs> Even when there is no Health 2.0 and M Health Zone, and we're on 90s, we'll still be doing the same stuff. All right, so this is Matthew Holt. Uh, I am signing off from this segment. I'm going to hand it over to somebody else, if, I'm getting, if I get the correct word, um, on Hibsy TV, um, live from Hims on a uh, sunny Wednesday morning, 2013. It's 2013 already. 
Um, I've been coming to him since 1994, and I'm beginning to feel very, very old. Uh, and I've been talking about Ben Trotter, who is the CEO of Haptique and also the host of the M Health Zone, which is what, Thursdays at? Thursdays at noon, Eastern. Oh, that's probably what he's read. On the West Coast, people get out of bed. I'll just listen to the replay. <laughs> that's good. All right, so Ben, thanks for your time. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing everyone back on the channel here in about an hour when I'm going to be taking Nate and the team here on a tour of the hymns floor. Looking forward to seeing that. I've got some people lined up. I hope it all works. <laughs>